Right, so what have we got today? Got the good old PV mate. It's uh, ugh. it's uh, one of the, one of the most common amps you find around. I remember these things being all over school, and you know they were missing half their knobs and crackled and made weird noises. Um, so this one's in for actually I don't know what. The guy dropped it off and uh, didn't tell me. So we'll suss it out. Let's just fire it up to begin with. Uh, the input jack's a little bit loose there. So this is the Envoy 110, fully solid state thing with a spring reverb. Uh, let's power it up. No smoke, that's good. No massive amount of hum. Bit of interference from the phone. And the uh, Zellweger tones someone was asking about in a previous stream. That's out. Hear that? That's the uh, interference from the signal A injecting our power line to turn on and off our hot water heaters. It's a pretty interesting system. You should look it up. But anyway, uh, all right. So we've got nothing plugged in at the moment. Doesn't seem to be any. Very dramatic noises. There's a thrash button. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Crackly on the reverb knob there. So let's set everything at 12 o'clock. Oop. 60 dB pad, that was a bit, uh, bit angry. Let's set everything at 12 o'clock and we'll have a listen. Nothing. at all. Hmm. Very, very slight signal there. That's on the second channel. So, something's not happy. Stand the thing up, get access to the rear panel. So we've got a preamp out, but we've got no power amp in like they do on some models, so we can't just plug in and uh, and have a go at the power amp. But we know the power amp's working because we can hear the crackle from the knobs and all of that jazz. So let's power it down and take her out of the box. Try not to destroy my whole workbench in the process. Typical PV budget driven construction, but pretty effective. It's got it where it counts. Alright, so we'll get rid of the box. Zoom in a bit for ya. That's the construction. So, single board, you've got the two output devices here, you've got a thermal switch. Uh, You've got power supply up this end, the input stage up this end. You've only got, what, two chips on the whole thing. The rest is discrete, transistors. Uh, very basic, very budget driven, but um, but they tend to last a pretty long time, these early uh, PVs. This is sort of a mid-range PV, probably uh, mid-2000s. I don't reckon the new stuff's gonna last that long. Just need one block. So what we'll do, we'll just isolate the speaker connector so we don't short it out. It's just hardwired there. Probably uh, just connect my little speaker terminals to it so I can plug the speaker in. Got 
Got a couple of these little adapter -y thingies. And uh, all the different types that you encounter in different amps. And it just interfaces with the jack. So that's what my uh, speaker under the bench is. So we use little speed connectors for this one. They're not insulated, so I'll chuck a bit of um, a bit of electrical tape over that. Should uh, do the job. Should say Meridian. Uh, yeah, Meridian MS. Made in USA. I heard <laughs> off a reasonably reliable source that um, China created a province called UK US. <laughs> so they can say built in UK US. <laughs> and a bunch of. That's the state of things. Yeah. Your country makes such crap that you've got to masquerade as another country just to sell your stuff. If it's true, could be bullshit, I don't know. Wouldn't put it past them. So we'll just give the thing a look over first. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be cracked solder joints somewhere. I did hear that jack a little bit crackly, but there was no evidence at all of the, the, the signal coming in. Um, something's coming in though, cause uh, you could hear that little bit of leakage. So what I might do is see if I can find the schematic. And we'll uh, we'll go from there. There's every chance it could be something simple like the uh, the preamp out jack as well. So what I'll do, I'll just plug the test speaker in. Give it some signal again. We'll just give it a bit of a poke around. So we're pumping a fair bit more signal in there, and we are getting a tiny bit of signal but that's maxed out now it's the second channel which is got a shit ton of gain so that's why it sounds louder there apparently from the customer report the reverb's not working too so uh we'll suss it out last because it might just need a new tank or some repair to the tank so let's put it back on the clean channel Just check initially the, that it's not the, uh, sorry, I'm struggling to speak, it's very early. It's not the uh, preamp out shorting jack. No, it doesn't appear to break the signal anyway. Get the piss out of me. <laughs> so it is, uh, it looks like it's just the input jack, so we'll uh, have to remove the board to get access to that. And just see if it's actually lifted the traces off the board, which it likely has. If we still had problems there, what I would have started to do is go over all the voltages and everything and just check, check that. Uh, Every stage is getting power correctly and all that kind of jazz, but just have a poke around first and nine times out of ten, particularly on these models, um, it's something mechanical. Yeah, it does look repairable. These earlier PVs generally are. The later ones where everything's DSP, not so much. So, Gonna buy an amp that you want to last a long time. Lyle just had a video on this. Uh, if you want it to last a long time, instead of basically being a subscription to the amp, because your subscription runs out in 12 months and the amp fails, and you gotta buy a new subscription, that's basically what they are, like phones. Um, instead of one of them, do you really need 1500 amp models and you know every effect under the sun and all of that, or do you just want an honest to goodness amp and use like pedals for your different sounds or 
or do you just want a really good single sound amp like a you know something for blues or whatever if you're gonna get something cheap there's a lot of amps out there that are really good at doing one thing and a lot of them are really reliable and there's a lot of amps out there that claim to do everything so they do nothing well they do everything mediocre and they often don't last a long time so you don't get attracted to every feature under the sun because often uh, often that's how you get a really unreliable device so we've got those weird PV pots with the small shaft, they're like 4.75 shaft or something instead of uh, 6 or 6.3 and they've got a strange little 11.32, 11 11.32nd 11 uh, not on them. They're really small. I don't know where they get them from or who makes them. I haven't seen them really anywhere else. So, like all these things, uh, generally PV make these connectors so they only go on one way. However, sometimes they go on more than one way, like this one, for example, that one. Um, that one is critical because that's the mains. This one's a switch, so it's not really critical. It's just single pole, single throw. This one here is your bipolar supply, so that's not critical either because it, um, it's got the center tap in the middle. Doesn't matter which way it is. Uh, so what we do, even if you think it's not important, just take a photo. Doesn't hurt, eh? It's pretty easy. And then you can make a wanky social media post about it later. Look what I fixed. Right, so I'll undo these jacks as well. Generally, you can get to the plastic ones just with your finger finger holes. That one's missing a nut anyway, so I have to put a freshie on there. They look like cliff style. Maybe no trick. I'll check that out. Uh, disconnect this one. Yeah, cracks all the joints all right. It hasn't lifted the pads. It's actually the ground that's let go. <clears throat> so you see that? I don't know what it looks like from the streaming end, but you got your pad and then there's a little, you can see the actual pin. It's, it's a dry solder joint, so we'll fire up the soldering station. That's likely likely all that's wrong with this thing. Um, all the pot solder connections look shiny and nice. I, don't, I think this thing's pre-lead free requirements because all the solder joints are really nice and shiny. Um, you find the lead free stuff's got more of a cloudy sort of look to it. So we'll just get stuck in and get this one done. There's no need to quote if it's under the uh, first hour labour. That's a condition of my repairs if I can fix it within the bench fee, which is covers one hour. We just go ahead. Keep stuff moving, you know. So we'll get rid of the old solder. In, I've got some here, <clears throat> some monos. Just look at the pin length because these pins look uh, a little bit shorter than I remember. <sighs> Just iron up that the uh, pin locations and everything are the same. You can see this one's got more thread on it, too. Yeah, everything looks the same. Sweet as, we'll use a new one. That will allow us to just bend the lead over ever so slightly. 
and maintain a little bit more mechanical support. Ah, that is better. All right, pop it back in. A little bit of hum there, that's literally from the transformer itself, not from the speaker. It's a tiny little uh, transformer, it's probably right on its limit. There we go. Second channel. A little bit crackly, uh, we have to just give them a bit of a clean. But uh, all the switches seem to be working. Gain, just gives you more gain. Stupid amounts of gain. Thrash just gives you a scoop. Remember my anthrax riffs. Like I say, stupid amounts of game. <laughs> it's good fun though, it reminds me of high school. <laughs> Uh, back to clean. Pretty nice sounding amp, really. That's everything flat. Six TV pad. That's sort of like plugging into the second jack on uh, a Fender amp. <laughs> darker as well it's probably what that's simulating I have to have a look at the schematic know exactly what's going on but let's get some sparkle happening sparkle sparkle <laughs> sounds yeah, pretty good like phew, I'd be happy with that as a kid you can stick all your choruses and your reverbs and your delays and shit up your ass and it's got a reverb in it but it's just a tank, traditional. So that's the next thing we'll check. Still got it in the bench speaker, I'll just uh, see if this cable reaches the reverb connector, probably not. I'll just remove that screw. Yeah, it sounds really nice here too. That's going through a um, Celestian G G twelve seventy five T, whatever, whatever the one in the nineteen sixty A quads is. Just check that reverb sounding like it should should be. No, it's not. Turn it around. The oscillation there while it was half out. No reverb. 
Alright, so we'll look at the reverb tank. Alright, so the springs look intact. Oh, it's got a sticker in it. From the competition. <laughs> Fender Rumble. So, we've got the tank out. Just check the wiring. Often it fractures where it's soldered. This one's got connectors on the elements themselves. So, we'll just unplug this. And determine if the coils have continuity. Right, set to ohms. I've got a bit of a corrosion on the cop on the solder there, so we'll just break through that. 100 ohms. And whoop, open circuit. Alright, so the so we know we were getting hum, so I dare say that the input coil, uh, sorry, output coil is okay. And this one's open. Yeah, so I'm touching directly to the terminals there and there's nothing. So open coil. That one's glued. So I don't hold much hope out of being able to repair it, but you know. You just buy new ones of these. So what I'll do is I'll give them an invoice for the work done so far, getting the thing to actually make signal again, and um, I'll give them an option to replace this tank with just a modern Accutronics or a, you know Belton one or whatever. And they can pick or choose. They can either just live without reverb, and if the amp's fine without it. Um, you could use a reverb pedal, which in my opinion, most of them sound better anyway. Or they can get this replaced. So while we've got it on the bench, we'll just check that the uh, idle current of the output stages is roughly equal. And we'll give the pots a clean. So we're expecting a couple of milliamps, uh, milli volts, sorry, across the uh, emitter resistors. This is a good way to slip and fuck shit up, so be careful. 15 millivolts one side. Zero on that one, that's something else. 16 millivolts that side, so yeah, not dramatically out. Um, we've done all this without, without a schematic. Um, I could download the schematic and show you everything, but these all have pretty similar topologies, so not a hell of a lot of need to do that.